worst of the worst. The most in this area hated people in the nation. The one that some prosecutor called monsters told these Puerto Rican how to read, how to write, and how to speak English. If they would never taught me, I would never survive that place. I would not be able to communicate better with my lawyers. I would not be able to reply the letters that so many pen pals wrote me. Some of them from this great state of Colorado that taught me and showed me so much love, so much compassion that make me feel like a human being. And today, I will not be able to share with all of you this sad story. I spent 17 years, eight months, and one day in Florida death row for a crime I did not commit. After 10 years, I was tired of it. I went out of there. But the only way out is to commit suicide. And believe me, last of my friends committed suicide. And I'm going to tell you how they do it. They got what they call a runner. The runner is an inmate that's doing time in prison population. And they get him out of prison. He's not sentenced to death. And they get him out of prison population so he can do the work in the dead row place. You see, the correction officers, they don't do nothing. They just watch you. And some of them give you a hard time when they can. So this runner, this enemy, that's not, not sentenced to death, he is the one that supplies us with the food, the toothbrush, the toothpaste, the toilet paper. The toothbrush, the map and the broom, so you can clean yourself. You also can supply your water too, that you can take your life with. And he knows it. All you got to do is give him four stamps. Or a pack of cigarette roll of paper tobacco, the cheap kind. And he will give you this too. Perhaps he do it because this item that I just mentioned are more important to him than your own life. Or perhaps he do it because he call himself assisting you, helping you. He works for you. He knows you want out of there. He knows that their row is hell. The tool is real simple. It's a garbage plastic bag. The one you see in the garbage can. You give him four stamps, and when the guard is looking, he will swing that bag inside your cell. You take that bag and you twist it all up and you make a rope. Then you put a noose in it. You put a noose in your neck. And you tie the other bar and the cell door bars. You throw yourself down, you're dead, but you're free. That's what the demons used to tell me. Why? Why you got to go to all of this? You're supposed to be a Puerto Rican man, a real macho man. Don't satisfy them, satisfy yourself. You said you didn't do it. You think they're gonna believe you? They're going to kill you anyway. So grab that bag. And that thoughts stay in my mind. I never see my friends kill themselves. <coughs> because I cannot see to the walls. But I see when they wheel the body out. Something in the back of my head tells me, you're not going to look at your friend for the last time? So I have a mirror myself. And I grab it, and I take it, and I stretch my arms to the bars with it, and I look, and this is what I see. I see a purple blue face that do not look like my friend. I get to see something else too. I get to see the noose in his neck, because they never take it out, and that stay in my mind. So now I want to take this trip. You see, I'm, I'm tired of it. I want out of there. I'm depressed. So I tell the runner, give me, give me that garbage bag. So I give him four stamps, and he's, when the guy went looking, he, he swing that bag inside myself. And I took the bag, and I, and I made a rope. Then I put a noose in it. Then I look at the rope, and I look at my bunk, and I say to myself, I better lay down and think about this a little bit more. 
So I take that rope that it's meant to take my life with. And I throw it under the boat. So when the guys walk by, they don't see him. And I lay down. When I lay down in the bunk, I fall in a deep, deep, deep sleep. And I start dreaming that I'm a little kid again. Doing the things I used to do when I was a little child. The things that make me happy. The things that make me smile. You see, I'm born in Brooklyn, New York. But I was raised in the island of Puerto Rico. It took me back when I was just a little kid. And when I get up in the morning and I look to, to the south, to the, to the east, it's a wonderful mountain. And if I walk six minutes to the south, I find myself in the most beautiful beach in the world. It looks to me. So here I am, dreaming that I'm swimming in the beautiful Caribbean Sea. The world is warm. The sun is bright. The sky is blue. The palm trees look so good. It's a beautiful day. And then I get to see something that I never saw before. Four dolphins coming my way. And they pass me. Then they turn around. And they pair that on one side. And they pair that on another side. And they start jumping and flipping like dolphins do. I'm having a ball in there. I'm so happy. Then I look to the shore. And it's a beautiful lady smiling at me, waving at me. And she seems so happy. And I know why she is happy. She's happy because I'm happy. That's my dear mother. And then I wake up. When I wake up, they don't smell like a peach. So I grab that rope that is meant to take my life with. And I walk straight to the toilet with it. And I look at the toilet, and I look at the rope, and I say real loud, I don't want to die. And I clutch it. But the true fact is, it was lots of, lots of, lots of beautiful dreams. Every time I got depressed, every time I went out of there, every time suicide thoughts came to my mind, our creator God sent me a beautiful dream. And I was wise enough to grab all them dreams as a sign of hope that one day I would be out of there, that I would be free. Like God was telling me, hey, I know you didn't do it, but I control the time. You get out. When I say you get out, you just got to trust me. And when I analyze everything, I come to one conclusion. It took 17 years, eight months, and one day to also change the man. The death penalty. The death penalty is a law made by human beings and carried out by human beings. And we all know we humans, we make mistakes. The death penalty is also a law that brings a lot of suffering, a lot of pain on both sides of the family. On the family victim of homicides, on the family of the woman and man that's condemned to death. What family is concerned, this is all I have. Mama, and five ends. Oh, I got brothers, I got sisters. I got uncles. I got lots of cousins. But they never wrote me a letter. Mama, in five ends. I do not know how the ends are in this generation. But in my generation, when I was growing up, if my aunt caught me doing something wrong, believe me, it's going to be a good spanking. And then, I got to get on my knees and pray to God that she don't tell mama. Because when she tell mama, it's going to be another good spanking. But when I was hungry, my aunts always feed me. When I, need, I needed a pair of pants, a pair of shoes, or a shirt, my aunts always bought it for me. And in that row, they never forgot me.